That's a tough one, my boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Okay. Breathe. 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 Okay. So, guys, um, that's how these seizures are. I'll handle it with one hand. I just wanted to show people that you can, um, you just need to hold the head, hold his head, hold his head and make sure um, the head doesn't hit the ground. Um, it's not a good idea to, you know, hold him down tight. It's just the best thing to do is let it be, but make sure the head doesn't hit on the ground. Okay, Bob. All right, now plenty of water. Wipe his face down and give him a massage around here. Okay. Okay, guys, so you've seen a seizure. I was sitting on the couch while that happened. Good boy. So I need plenty of water now. Come on, drink some water. Come on. Drink some water. Drink some water. Come on. So now the body overheats. And then you check why the ears. So the ears are really, really hot, high temperature. I don't need a temperature gun, I just know his body temperature now. Um, you can also check under the legs. Leg area here under the arms. Temperature. And then the next step is um, always keep a wet towel in the freezer or an ice pack, a gel, a flexible ice pack. You know, you grab this, put it around the neck area. Just until um, until that heavy breathing goes. It's all about controlling that heavy breathing. So it's always got to be in a cool environment. Take that off. So to get rid of that heavy breathing. Uh, you need to keep them cool. Having a seizure really takes it out of you. It uh, burns a lot of calories, a lot of fat, a lot of muscle. Um, sometimes even irreversible to the brain. Sometimes even irreversible to the brain. There's brain damage. I don't wash everything, I just wash the bottom. That's where that's where he overheats the most, right here, these sections here. See how his the breathing has gone? 
He loves it. So once the body temperature is cooled down, um, then you take him out and let him have some rest. Okay, come on, Tyson, let's go. Come on. All right. So this is the. This is straight after the seizure. Come on, Tyson. Tyson, get. Yeah. Come on. All right, good boy. Good boy. Well done. Come on, Tyson. Okay, he's just finding his way around. I'm not drawing him up. See how the breathing has uh, reduced by about 80 to 90 percent. Now he does the little walk arounds. Just put him to the side. Pat him like this for a little bit until he falls asleep. And then after everything, one cc of this is in a happy place. The heavy breathing is gone and that's when I'm happy as well. It's an extremely hard job to look after um, a dog that has encephalitis so you just got to be very patient um, follow the breaths and um, also always have you know all this medication ready um, you know I've always got Valiums I've got Xanaxes and everything um, you just got to be very very patient and also um, uh, keep him in a quiet place but basically I've been in self-quarantine as well um, haven't been able to really leave the house much because um, yeah, no one's going to look after him better than I am. Um, you've got to be there when they're having the seizure so they don't hit their head anywhere because once they do, then um, you know that can be the cause of death. And then straight after the seizure, um, you know the treatment is important. What you need to do and how you need to do it is very, very important. And that's why he's been alive for over a year. Normally encephalitis, there's no survivors. Um, you know, it's a 99% death rate. So Tyson is that 1% that has survived. Basically, um, he becomes paralyzed and then he relearns how to walk again, how to um, do his pee, do his poo and everything. So that's why um, everything you've ever taught, your, your dog or your puppy or whatever, they unlearn and then they've got to relearn it again. So it's a very, very hard process. That's why I'm making this video and I hope no one goes through this, but if they do, I hope this video helps.